Hey guys. So, in your life, okay, do you live life by what you have? Like, do you base yourself, your worth, your life, <laughs> fucking lack of a better word, on what you have? I mean, your accomplishments are awesome. They are, truly. And don't get me wrong. Uh, but do you value that and that alone? Like, do you believe the things make you who you are? I, I, I seriously hope not. <laughs> because they don't. Nope. And I know the way we are now as society and whatever, like, it's cool to buy a car and fucking post it on Facebook, right? Ooh, it's, uh, you know, nice to show off when you buy something expensive, right? It's just, it's just our culture, right? But they don't make you any more or less appealing. Just because you have them or don't have them, in my book. Ah, uh, I think in the grand scheme of things, actually, they don't. Nope, not even a little. It, it's more about how it, or those things, right, make you feel. See, it, it, it's not the dream home. It's not the shiny car. It's not about a certain person. It's not really about those physical things that we seek out. We put an emphasis on the physical, but the physical isn't what we truly want. I mean, yeah, we think it is sometimes, but it's actually the energy of how those things evoke a feeling inside of us. That feeling that gorgeous feeling of it, that's what we crave. Not the actual thing. If we allow ourselves to live at one with that feeling, one with the universe, vibrationally aligned with that, well, that's when we become those magicians of our own lives. We begin to see happiness as an energy of what we allow to surround us and not as a physical construct of what we surround ourselves with. Mm. So instead of the home, we seek to find the secure feeling of owning our own space. Instead of the car itself, we seek to have the feeling of independence and in getting to where we want in our own vehicle. Mm. Instead of focusing on just finding a mate, we seek to feel the love and joy when we connect wholly with another person. Yeah? And sometimes we, we decide to stay in situations because we think it's better, more secure, cost effective maybe. I, I don't know. Name your fucking reason. But I, I ask if it costs less money wise, okay? If it costs you less money-wise, right, but is draining you energy-wise, are you really saving anything in the long run? Are you? <laughs> so, as we keep going through this, I ask that you start reframing your mindset, right? Right fucking now, okay? As you listen to this episode. Reframe your mindset to this way of viewing yourself. And it's just this. You do not need a fucking reason to be worthy of abundance. I'm going to say that again. You do not need a fucking reason to be worthy of abundance in any way, shape, 
or form. Let yourself feel the feeling of goodness, of gratitude, of all that wonderful shit we fucking feel when we feel abundant. And fucking boom, you are abundant. (laughs) It's as simple as that. So, reframe your minds for me. For me, please. (laughs) As we move on in this episode, because honestly, we all deserve to feel abundant in our own life, in our own skin, as ourselves, and for ourselves. And abundance is more than just money. Okay, remember that. We have love of family or or a great romance in life. We are abundant. If we have friends who care and, and think about us, we are abundant. If we have food, we have clothes, we have cars, whatever. Yes, we are abundant. It's all the feeling of it. Love that feeling. Live that feeling. Yeah? <laughs> See... There's so many opportunities out there just waiting for you. But you have to feel worthy of receiving them. If you don't, you won't attract. It's about believing in yourself and that you matter and who and what you want in life fucking matters. And it's about enjoying the feeling of that When it comes to you. Shit. It's about enjoying the feeling of that before it even gets to you physically. It's all about that feeling, you guys. Because like attracts like. I mean, think about it. Okay? Uh, If you have a relationship, but you hate being with the person, but you think, well, shit. At least I'm not alone. Is that really the feeling of being in a relationship that makes you feel good? No. I say no. It's a cop-out to avoid change. And when you do this, you're focusing on lack. And so what you're saying to the universe is... I'm not worthy of a loving relationship with someone I care about and they care about me and we enjoy each other. See? (laughs) And so you sit in the unhappiness you allowed because you felt unworthy of your own fucking abundance. Uh, I hope that makes sense. (laughs) I guess... I guess what I'm getting at is don't sit in something that's practical If it's no longer making you feel your best. Because if you have any self-worth, any self-worth at all, you know that you have to listen to your heart. And if your heart isn't in it, then it's clearly not for your best good. And it's not for your best, most abundant vibrations to come to you. It's not going to happen. And that's why, as humans, we stay stuck. Because we focus our abundance on practicality and not on the feeling of truly being abundant from our own heart space. And I know someone's going to be like, oh, well, it's hard. It's hard to walk away from things that seem so practical in this world. And you know what? Fucking yeah, it is. It is. It can be. (laughs) But when you allow yourself the ability, when you can truly come at your own life from your own heart, you realize that even though you might not know for sure what you're walking into, you know it's always better than where you were that wasn't giving you that good feeling, that abundant feeling, that dare I fucking say it, right feeling. You just know. And you trust. (laughs) It's funny. Uh, 
I've been getting a lot about the number three lately. And what's been coming to me, the number three, you guys, is uh, it's a sacred number in so many cultures and in, in, in religions. And many have wondered throughout time and history about the significance of the number three, right? Um, fucking Nikola Tesla, right? He was convinced that if humans can understand the importance of the numbers three, six, and nine, then they would unravel the mysteries of the universe itself. And he was so convinced of this that he lived his life based on this theory. Like, uh, for example, he would only stay in hotel rooms that were divisible by three. Hmm? Uh, also, you may have heard, you know, I talk about manifesting all the time. You may have heard of the 369 method for manifesting. Uh, if not, it's where you write your desires three times in the morning, six times in the afternoon, and then nine times at night. And it's believed that 369 causes unity with the divine. Three equals energy, six equals frequency, and nine equals vibration. <laughs> I just find it so interesting. But I was guided um, not to focus on the whole 369, but to focus on the number three alone. And it was just recently that I was guided to do this. It just kept popping up. And uh, uh, what was given to me, it really blew my mind. Um, so, of course, I want to share it with you guys because it ties back into what I was talking about earlier and honoring yourself and your own feelings of abundance around the physical world. We live in feelings of abundance, okay? Um, all right. So I guess I'm going to talk to you a little bit about my process and how I do what I do. Um, so I have pages of interviews with my guides, okay? And my main two are archangels. They are. Um, Archangel Michael is with me a lot and he has been with me for many of my past lives is what he's told me. And I work closely with him. I feel him strongly in my life. Um, uh, of course I have other guides and I've had other guides. <clears throat> Some guides are with us for our whole lives. Okay. Um, some are with us to teach us certain lessons or guide us through certain phases of our lives or ascension. And like, once we learn those lessons, they move on. But there are certain guides that are with you for your whole life. Um, but Mikey, <laughs> that's what I call him. He, he likes it. <laughs> uh, but Mikey's been with me and is one of my main guides. Um, I also connected with Archangel Metatron, um, this past year, and now he is one of my main guides for the rest of this physical life. Um, I, I just want to explain this as like a precursor to what I'm going to tell you about the number three. I know many may not know or understand or believe in spirit guides or whatever, or, how to connect with their own guides. Some might not know, but I do. And I'm not trying to sway anyone to what I do or how I do it. As I always say, we're all on our own path, right? And what works for us individually is what we should seek. So this is how I have come to grow my faith in spirituality. Um, expand my awareness of all that I am and how I want to view my life from a conscious perspective, okay? Um, basically, I just, I know what I know, and I have faith in what I know, and I believe in my abilities, and I know that when I seek to know more, they're willing to guide me. I just have to ask. And for me, that's a love. That's an unconditional love I have with my guides, and it's just perfect for me. And I love that. I do. Um, 
Ooh, we're about to get a storm. Can you hear that? Ooh. It's like emphasis. Hmm? <laughs> See, if you want to connect with your own guides, you absolutely can. Um, you have to be open to them. And it takes a bit of breaking away from the old paradigm of how we perceive being human. Again, if it's not for you, then it's not. And that's okay, you know. Um, but I don't know. Maybe just listen on, you know, for an interesting theory, if nothing else, right? <laughs> I mean, shit. You've already listened this, this far in, so you might as well hear the fucking rest. I know you, I know you're curious. <laughs> Uh, anyway, um, as with this podcast, I get at what I call downloads, okay, from my guides. Um, sometimes I, I want answers. Well, a lot of times I want answers to things. It's just how I fucking am, okay? <laughs> it's just how I am. And so I decided a few months back to talk to my guys in a way that they could answer me and that I would understand. Because again, I'm learning more about this myself. And so a lot is about that trust I spoke on earlier and allowing yourself to just go with it. And that's what I do now. That's how I live. If it feels right, I'm doing it. If the person feels right, I'm going for it. If the job feels good, you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? So anyway, so I have a and a with archangels, huh? and I think that's pretty fucking cool. And what they tell me comes through in the form of numbers. And I look up the numbers and I get the messages in words. And sometimes, guys, not sometimes, every time, they answer the fucking questions I ask as long as I'm meant to know them, okay? If if they can't tell me, they'll just tell me no, or I can't know that yet, or it's not time, etc. Um, so for me, like, I don't know who's going to come through to talk to me. Um, and I do it using a pendulum in case you haven't listened to me before I use a pendulum. Um, I just ask, you know, in my safe, in my safe space, it's always a safe space. It's always clean and you know, whatever. But I always ask, is there a guide with me for my best and highest good? And then when I get the answer, it's always yes, because <laughs> I'm very protected. I, I know, I just know what I know. And then I ask with whom I'm speaking and it's important to understand divinity before you attempt energetically connecting with them too. Um, even like when you do tarot, you should, you know, safeguard yourself in some way because a lot of this shit energies and things like that, there's light and there's dark. And if you don't know what you're doing, you don't know what you're doing. You want to be mindful it's not a game. It's not a toy. Okay. But it's important. You understand that when you're connecting with them. And like I said, I'm cutting this down to an episode, you know, length, but uh, I've studied it for some time. And like I said, I make sure I'm grounded and doing my divination for light and love only. Okay. Never for anything other than that. We good? good. Okay. So the number three, let's talk about it for a few before I get into my guides, mind blowing interview. Okay. Because it really blew my fucking mind. So I began seeing like three, 33, 333, right. And, and I started wondering about, um, Tesla's theory, right. And then I ended up watching a documentary on three and, it's sacredness. Okay. Again, <laughs> signs present themselves when you're open to understanding and seeing them. So I watched this video, right? You guys, and it's fucking intriguing me. Like, whew, I'm like, whoa, <sighs> like for example. All right. So some things with three throughout 
history, religion, what have you. So we have Christianity, right? Which has the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Also have the three wise men in the Bible who visit baby Jesus, right? In the manger. We just had Christmas, right? Yeah. Everybody knows that story. Uh, Jesus rose from the dead after three days. Jonah was in the belly of the whale for three days and nights, yeah? In Hindu, there's Brahma the creator, Vishnu the preserver, and Shiva the destroyer. Hmm? There's the three jewels of Buddhism. In Norse mythology, Odin suffered three hardships on the world tree. In Wicca, there's the rule of three, the triple goddess being the maiden, mother, and the crone. In Taoism, there's the three sovereigns, heaven, humanity, and hell. Mm -hmm. Three is also represented in the timekeeping of Earth, past, present, future. (laughs) And mathematics is not my strong suit, okay? I fucking hate math, but still. I wanted to note that three, okay, is the smallest prime number. And... This is what I found interesting. Three is the only number where the numbers before it equal it. Like one plus two equals three. And I just found that so fucking interesting that out of all the infinite numbers we have, that this one number, the number three, is the only one that does this. And, oh, what else? Oh, our fucking own DNA. Our DNA. From a genetic standpoint, three is the magic fucking number. In my humble opinion. Because that's the code, okay? That translates the DNA like, I don't know, fucking concoction recipe that's encoded in our genes, right? Into the thousands of different proteins that build everything on earth. Every living thing on earth is based on groups of three letters. No more than three and no less than three. DNA. Just saying. So yeah, (laughs) clearly many people, scientists and cultures all believe and agree in the importance of the number three. And I started wondering about this. Like, are we as humans almost hardwired to subconsciously understand the importance of this number like maybe yes as it's literally encoded in our dna (laughs) but still as you know okay i love a good theory and i love thinking outside of where we are told to and so i began asking my guides about this i did and for the first time i've decided to just share my interview with you as it came through in my little Q&A mode, okay? Uh, And a little disclaimer. The info comes to me fast when I channel these downloads, so my handwriting is messy. Uh, It's a form of automatic writing, if you will. So, (sighs) I may have some trouble reading my own handwriting is what I'm saying. (laughs) But I'm going to stumble through. For all of you. That's my love, okay? <laughs> I'm a giver. What can I freaking say? But no. So, <laughs> all right. So, in this Q&A, Metatron came through. And uh, this is how it went. So, I questioned first. I said, I'm guided to understand more about the divine sacredness of the number three. What can you tell me at this time in my journey about this divine number? And he answered, The three and its importance to your spirituality make itself known at a time when you have taken opportunities that are important and are serving your spiritual growth. It is a sign that you truly are on the path of light, love, and forgiveness. All you need is to stand in this light and manifest your future from this loving space. 
you should know that the bumps on your journey are being ironed out and that the worst of the situation is over. And then I said, okay. I said, so three is about light and love. Many cultures show divine gods or trinities. What can humans deduce from these ancient knowings of the importance of threes? What is spirit guiding us towards with this knowledge? And Metatron answered, The knowledge is within you all. The three represent the, I'm sorry, the three repeats in cultures, legends, and religions to show you to be open to the light, to believe in the power of heaven, and to trust. Angels are always close to you. The divine wants you to know that you are powerful and you can do this. That's why throughout your human history, the stories repeat the secret sacredness of the three. You're guided to embrace this because you are all meant to lift each other in different ways. Your gifts cannot be gifts unless you give them to others. You are being encouraged to share your talents with the world. The number three is a guided invocation of the light and love, the bridge between heaven and earth for humanity to tap into at will, to grow and become the divine source energies they are destined to be. And I was like, damn. <laughs> I said, <laughs> my guides know who I am, you guys, okay? I talk to them just like I talk to you. I said, um, how can we do this? How can we be sure we are at the right place in our lives to truly know and break through the 3D illusions to get to this divine higher self? And Metatron said, you will connect with what brings you closer to the divine. You will have begun to live life allowing and knowing that your prayers have been heard and you will know in trust that the answers will come in divine timing. You will have let go of all that does not serve you. And you will notice it is a true, it is truly a time for you to experience infinite abundance. Mm. <laughs> you will see obstacles being removed from your path and feel your spiritual support increasing. It is important that you embrace all the changes as they are presented to you. And then I asked one more question and I said to him, I feel it's beautiful how spirit just asks us to trust. Trust in the answers we seek as individuals will come. And I've learned that 369 are keys to understanding the ways of the universe. And I know more will come to me on this later. But for now, can you tell me why in the infinite of numbers, the number three is the only number where the numbers before it equal it. And he said, <sighs> he said, the key to this is within the self. One plus two equals three an emotional body, a spiritual or light body, into a physical body. The self is the importance. An integrated divine source energy yearns to be tapped into within each human the divine has created on earth. Angels are encouraging you to be aware of your own body and energy at this time. Self-awareness is key to increasing your self-worth and connection. You may feel as though you are being blocked, but know that your angels are redirecting you toward your long-term goals. 
we ask that you recognize the efforts you are making. You must learn to approve of yourself and what you are doing, especially if you feel undervalued by others, because the lessons you are being presented with are self-created. Angels are encouraging you to step into self-love and self-acceptance as this will clear any roadblocks and light up the answers you need to move forward in your mind. A trinity again. Mind, body, soul. Learn to embrace the self and the answers are clear. Mm. So that's where I ended it because he just blew my fucking mind. Um, and I just hope you see how important self-love and self-worth are to our own spirituality and our own ascension into higher consciousness. We should not berate ourselves for allowing that which is not for our best lives to fall away from us. To me, the message is clear. Trust yourself. Trust what your heart is telling you. And you will feel the abundance of your life each day for the rest of your days. And remember, I've said it before. As we become adults in this society, we're taught to think and programmed to think in order to feel. We cannot think to feel. We just feel. I said it before, too. Once we start thinking about it, we're fucked. (laughs) So, I don't know. I hope this will encourage anyone who so chooses to try to honor the self a little more as they move through this new chapter. Hmm? This new year. The big old 2023. (laughs) It ends in fucking three. (laughs) No coincidences, my friends. No coincidences. Honor the feeling of abundance in all areas of your life. And know you're worthy of all of it. As Metatron said, as humans on this journey, we need to learn to embrace the self. And that's when the answers become clear. Mm. Couldn't say it any better. All right, guys. I'm done for now. I'll talk to you all later. Bye.